Released on 22nd of June, Sonic Origins brings four of the Blue Blair's classic games to the latest console generation. But it does more than that, and despite a few hiccups in the presentation, there's a whole lot of value for Sonic fans old and new in this latest digital-only release. Hi, I'm Phil and you're watching Uncap Gaming. I've been a fan of Sonic the Hedgehog since I was about 10 years old. I don't just mean that I liked the game either, though I didn't have a word for it at the time. Sonic marked the first franchise where I was very much a part of the fandom. As well as having all of his games on the Sega Mega Drive, or Genesis if you're watching this in the US, I devoured Fleet Base Sonic the Comic, the Sonic Sat AM cartoon, and a whole bunch of novelizations which saw Sonic's adventures extend into the fourth dimension, where he messed with time travel in a far more mind-bending way than we saw in Sonic CD. I even still have a whole file full of my own Sonic the Hedgehog fan art and fan comics, which I shall not be showing off in public anytime soon. My point in mentioning all of this is that as a character and a series, Sonic comes with a whole lot of nostalgia. This is clearly something that Sonic Origins seeks to tap into, not just by remastering these games for a new generation, but by offering a whole package designed exactly for people like me. The games in this collection are Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic CD, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 and Sonic 3 and Knuckles, the latter of which is technically two games, because you have to combine the cartridges of Sonic 3 and Sonic and Knuckles to get it. For each game you have the option to play the classic game in 4x3, the updated anniversary edition in 6x9, a boss rush mode where you face off against all the bosses one after the other, and a mirror mode where everything is backwards. For Sonic 3 and Knuckles, you also get both the Blue Spheres bonus game from the original release, for which you had to plug a cartridge other than Sonic 2 or 3 into Sonic and Knuckles, and a brand new one specifically made for Sonic Origins. On top of that, as if that wasn't enough, there's a story mode where you can play all the games in sequence connected by brand new animated segments, and a mission mode where you have to beat a number of time challenges in specially designed versions of the levels from each game. In the story mode, Sonic has infinite lives. He has the traditional three in other modes. The way you would find extra lives or continues, you find coins. These can also be earned in the game's mission mode. You can spend them in the game's museum on various extras, or in story mode you can use them to retry failed special stages. The game also tracks your times on each level of the game in its various modes, in case you're the competitive type who likes to set records. If you've played classic Sonic before, then the gameplay on offer won't be anything new to you. My muscle memory from playing these games endlessly as a 10 year old saw me through, which also explains why Sonic CD gave me the most trouble, as I never had a Sega CD as a kid. If your only experience of Sonic is in 3D form, or you've never played Sonic before at all, then you're in for a treat. There's a fine balance in the levels of these games between speed and precision, with quick reflexes required to see you through the acts undamaged. There are multiple routes to take in most levels, some with more obstacles and dangers than others, and there are as many parts where you will be timing precise jumps as there are loop-de-loops and speedways. If you go for all the Chaos Emeralds, or in Sonic CD, Time Stones, then the special stages present their own challenges. Sonic 2's special stages feel faster and more difficult to manoeuvre in 16x9 than they do in the original 4x3, though that might just be me. All of these stages require practice and mastery, though in my story playthrough against Sonic CD stood out as the only game where I couldn't get all of the gems. There's not much to say on the gameplay that hasn't been said before. These games are, and were from the first release, solid platformers finely tuned for Sonic's specific skill set. My personal favourite is Sonic 3 and Knuckles, both for the gameplay and having what feels, despite the lack of dialogue or narrative, a really awesome story if you get the true ending of Super Sonic, which, incidentally, is why I love the new Sonic movie so much. It's pretty much this game come to life. When playing through the game, there were some instances where there appeared to be graphical glitches. For instance, in laser beams not being visible, or the super emeralds of Sonic and Knuckles not shining as they were supposed to. Sonic's spin attack also often looked like a shiny bowling ball that moved across the screen, but didn't appear to actually be, well, spinning. However, these were minor irritations that didn't really interrupt the gameplay. On the other hand, there were a number of little changes that made things feel a bit more immersive. On the original Sonic 3, the chase scene where Robotnik's flying battery tries to bomb Sonic and Tails sees Tails slow down every time he reaches Sonic, therefore getting bombed to hell. Now he simply keeps up with Sonic and keeps moving. He is, sadly, as much of a liability as ever in Sonic 2's special stages, but that was always part of the game. On the other hand, when his plane flies left, the Sonic lettering is the right way around rather than mirrored. These bits of polish add nothing to the gameplay, but they please me. The biggest and most negative change is in the music of Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Certain iconic tracks have been changed. If this is, as it seems, down to rights issues, then there's nothing to be done about it. But long time fans will feel the absence of absolute bangers like the Ice Cap Zone theme. Beyond these changes, though, the soundtrack of this game still goes as hard as it ever did. The other major negative, particularly in respect of bringing in new players, is the complete lack of accessibility options. 
There are tutorials and the options to get new players acquainted, and the infinite lives of story mode makes playing through that much less daunting without the risk of an absolute fail state. However, there are no options for controller remapping, changing the colour scheme, customising sound cues, or similar to accommodate players with disabilities. This is a shame, especially given the advances made in recent years in terms of accessibility in gaming. Overall, Sonic Origins is absolutely jam-packed with content. It'll appeal strongly to the nostalgia of long-standing Sonic fans, whilst giving plenty of reasons for newer fans to get stuck in. Experienced players can get all of the trophies or achievements in around 10 hours, and there will still be plenty left to do after that. Glitches and technical issues were very minor in my time with the game, but the music changes will disappoint those familiar with the originals. The only genuine sour note is the lack of accessibility, which locks a lot of disabled gamers out of what is otherwise a fantastic experience. My final verdict is that you should absolutely play this game immediately, if you can. Let me know in the comments if you've played Sonic Origins or are planning to. What did you like best or what are you most looking forward to? Don't forget to give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe for all things gaming. See you next time!